Hello there, welcome to the June 2019 applied paper here We're on the final question of the paper, the fifth mechanics question. So the point A and B lie 50 metres apart on a horizontal ground. At time t equals zero, two small balls, P and Q, are projected in a vertical plane containing AB. Uh, ball P is projected from A with a speed of 20 metres per second at 30 degrees to AB. Ball Q is projected from B with a speed U at an angle out theta to BA as shown in figure 3. At time t equals 2 seconds, P and Q will collide. Until they collide, the balls are modelled as particles moving freely under gravity. Part A is find the velocity of P the instant before it collides with Q. So we want to find the velocity of P. So what that means is we're going to need an upward velocity and a downward velocity. So upward velocity and a to the right velocity, and then we'll find the magnitude of that. So we're just going to start by doing SUVAT in the vertical plane. So SUVAT upwards. So S we're not interested in. U is going to be, now let's resolve this vertical speed here. It's going to be 20... Um, times sine 30. We all know that sine 30 is a half, so it's going to be 10. Uh, v is what we want to work out. A is going to be acceleration due to gravity, so that's going to be minus g, and t equals 2. So we need a formula linking these things together then, not s. s is not interesting here. So v equals u plus a t. So the speed vertically, or the velocity vertically, is going to be 10 plus um, 2g, or minus 2g. And that's going to give us 10 minus 2 times 9.8, which is minus 9.6. So it's going to start to come downwards meters per second. And then we need the horizontal for horizontal velocity. So now horizontally. Now remember horizontally for these kind of projectiles, because there's not going to be any acceleration horizontally, you can just do distance equals speed times time. Or in fact, no, the distance, the speed horizontally is just going to remain constant. So that's going to be 20 cos 30. It's always going to remain as 20 cos 30. Velocity equals 20 cos 30. Cos 30 is root 3 over 2, so that's going to be 10 root 3. So therefore, the velocity, the total velocity, the magnitude of the velocity, is going to be the square root of 9.6 squared add 10 root 3 squared. And if we type that all into the calculator, then we're going to get 19.8. Uh, meters per second. Now, given that the question says um, find the velocity of P um, at the instant before it collides with Q, we also need to provide it with some direction. This at the moment is just a speed. We need to, if we want to give a final answer in a velocity, we need to give a direction. So we now need to work out the, the kind of bearing or the angle to the horizontal it's traveling at. It looks like here it is going 10 root 3 to the right. And it's going to be traveling at that instant minus 9.8 downwards. So if we now work out what this angle to the horizontal is there, that's going to be a calculation of tan inverse uh, opposite, which will be just 9.8. And then we'll refer to it as a negative over 10 root 3. Let's just do that on the calculator. Well, I'm currently in radians mode. Let's change out of that. Degrees mode. Uh, tan inverse, 9.8 divided by 10 root 3, and that's 29.5 degrees. So it's 19.8 meters per second, um, and 29.5 degrees below the horizontal. There we are. So if you want to give an answer as a velocity, you do need to give both the 
kind of speed and the direction. So it's 19.8 meters per second and 29.5 degrees below the horizontal. OK, let's now move on to part B. Part B is asking us to find the size of the angle um, theta and the value of u. So what I think we'll do first is we'll work with the horizontals and we know that they're going to collide after two seconds and we know that once we've um, resolved the speeds going horizontally they're just going to remain at that speed and we know that the sum of the distances travelled whether p is going to travel further or q is going to travel further is going to be a total of 50. So we know that uh, we can use the formula distance equals speed times time we know that for p, the distance is going to equal 10 root 3, because that's the speed. We resolved that in the previous question. It's going to be 20 cos 30, so that's 10 root 3 times time, which is 2. And we know that for q, it's going to be u cos theta um, that will equal, and then times by 2 for the time of the speed and then times time equals uh, the distance for q. So then when we add these two together, so therefore 10 root, so we could do 20 root 3, that would be 10 times 2 is 20, times root 3 plus 2 uh, u cos theta equals the total distance, which is 50. What I've done with this question here is I've set leftwards to be uh, positive for B, but rightwards to be positive for A. And that shouldn't affect the question too much. Um, we could divide by 2, and that would give us 10 root 3 plus u cos theta equals 25. And then maybe take the 10 root 3 onto the other side, so we get u cos theta equals 25 minus 10 root 3. Okay, so this is going to be important. Hopefully at some point later on when we start to work vertically, we're going to get expression for u sine 30. So now working vertically. So we're going to now have some uh, vertical SUVAT involved. This is going to be a lot more tricky than the horizontal one. So for p, let's, no, let's, do, um, yeah, let's do particle p first. It's going to be... Um, S equals, well, actually the height on both of them is going to be the same. We want them to meet at the same height. So height I'll just call S. Uh, U is going to be uh, 10. We worked that out previously. That's 20 sine 30. So that's going to be just 10. Uh, v we're not particularly interested in. A is minus G and T equals 2. So S equals UT plus half AT squared. That would give us a formula of S equals U times T, which is 20, um, plus half A T squared, but there's a minus because of the G, minus half times T squared, that would be 2, 2G. Two so it's half A T squared, yeah, that's 2G. Okay, so let's now, that's the one for P, let's now do one for Q. It's going to be a little bit more tricky here. S equals S. The initial speed is going to be U sine theta. U sine theta. A is still going to be minus G and the time is still going to be T equals 2. So let's now do a S equals UT plus half AT squared. S equals UT plus half a t squared formula. I've done that for both of them. So u times t, so that's going to be 2u sine theta. <clears throat> and then that's going to be minus, because we're going to eventually have a minus g in there, minus a half times um, half times 2 squared, that would be 2, and every times by g, so that would be 2g as well. So that's our formula for particle Q. And now we just need to find an expression. Well, the, these, um, this vertical distance here is going to be the same on both of them. So I could therefore write 20. Um, in fact, we could just cancel out the 2G straight away. 20 minus 2G equals 2U sine 
theta minus 2g. Cancel out the 2g's on both sides. Divide by 2, 10 equals u sine theta. Hey, so there we are. So that's important, and so is this one here. So we have u cos theta equals 25 minus 10 root 3. And we also have u sine theta equals 10. Okay, so all that remains is for us to now solve this. So we'll call this equation number one. We'll call this equation number two. We'll do equation two divided by equation number one. And that will give us tan theta equals 10 divided by 25 minus 10 root 3. And that will give us an angle of theta. Let's work it out in the calculator tan inverse fraction button 10 over 25 minus 10 root 3 oh, whoops uh, put the bracket in the wrong place and that's going to give us 52.5 and then if we substitute that back into one of these expressions here u sine uh, 52.5 equals 10. And then if we divide the sine 52.5 onto the side, so 10 divided by sine answer gives us an answer of 12.6. So there we are, lovely. We found theta and we found alpha and we found uh, theta and mu u. So there we are, that's the answer for part B. And let's move on to part C now, a sneaky one marker at the end there. States one limitation of this model, other than air resistance, that would affect the accuracy of your answers. Um, well, the, the direction of the wind would be important there. The effect of any spin on the ball would be important there. And the size of both of the balls would be important as well. So any one of those options there would be fine for you to say uh, the direction of wind, the effect of wind, um, a spinning of the ball and size of the ball is all fine in that last part C question. So there we are, that's the answer for uh, question five, the fifth mechanics question on the June 2019 applied paper. Hopefully you found these set of videos helpful. And uh, good luck with your 2020 exam. Otherwise, you're very welcome to move on to the 2020 series of uh, question videos. And good luck with your 2021 exam. Thanks very much for watching.